In this video I'm going to take a look at how we can create a fixed size Python list but also go on to explain why in fact you should not bother doing such a thing. A list in Python is similar to arrays in other languages but it is important to note that a list is not the same as arrays in other languages. For example, a list can store mixed types, e.g. a list does not have to store all integers as you would have in other languages for arrays. A list does not have to be of a fixed size, i.e. have a fixed number of elements. A list can grow and shrink at runtime as is needed. Now all of these features here, this ability to grow and shrink at runtime and have different types stored within the elements of a list is not something that arrays of other languages have. However, what if the algorithm requires a list of a fixed length? Perhaps you are translating a program from another language that uses arrays of a fixed length. This video tutorial shows how to create and initialize a list of a fixed length. Let's consider this computer program and let's look to the first line. Here you can see I've chosen the name for underscore element underscore list and that has been assigned this and you can see in square brackets I have zero and this which looks like a multiplication operator but is indeed something in this context referred to as a repetition operator is followed by four and that means that the list is going to contain four of these four zeros and consequently if we look at the schematic diagram that this program statement here creates it will look like this and you can see it's got the name for underscore element underscore list and look at the content of each element and you can see it's zero we have the index here going for a four element list from zero through to three Let's consider the runtime for this computer program and we will get this. Now this line is responsible for outputting this which you can see is the entirety of the list. Now this line is responsible for outputting one of the elements and it's responsible for outputting the element with this index position which is this one here so the zero is placed here. Now this line of code is responsible for outputting this element to the console and of course this element is at position index 1 which means that we go to here in the list and this 0 is output to this position. Now these two lines of code are responsible for sending these two zeros to the console position here. Now let's consider this computer program and I've made a change to the first line of the code otherwise it's exactly the same as the one we've just observed and the difference is shown here you can see I have the word list now that's emphasizing to me that I'm going to be creating an instance of the list class and I've had to add these two brackets here and within the brackets you can see I have the square brackets with a zero and this is the repetition operator meaning that we're going to have four of these within the list and if I look at the schematic diagram produced by this line of code it's this and you can see it's identical so this is another way of producing a list of a fixed size and the list being initialized in this case to all the zeros as you can see here now these lines they're identical to the ones we saw in the last program so what they're going to do is simply output the list in its entirety and then each element of the list in turn as you can see here Let's consider another example and here you can see I've got almost the same program whereas if you look at these brackets you can see where I've made the change. Here where I've now got the word none there was a zero. So when this line of code executes what we're going to have as shown by the schematic diagram is this. We're still going to have the four underscore element underscore list and if we look to the content we can see we have within the content this here none. Now when I then look at these print statements what they're going to do is print what is within the list as they've done in the previous two programs we've looked at in this video and what we can expect to see is this and you can see that's the list in its entirety and these here are the outputs from each of the elements in turn. 
Now here you can see I've used this word non. Now you can think of non as a value that is used to signify empty or no value here. So if I look to this element, you can see this stores none, and that is implying that the list is empty of any values that we might want to use, or there is no value here. In other words, it's not an integer, it's not a string, and so on. Now I'll come on to what none is useful for in a later video, but it's often the case that you might wish to initialize various lists using this word none. Let's look at another example. Here you can see I've got the name 6 underscore element underscore list and that's been assigned this here. And you can see the square brackets contains a 0. We have this repetition operator, but this time in this position I don't have 4, I have 6. Now the consequence of that is that this line will produce a 6 element list as you can see here and the content of each of the elements is 0 and we can see the index goes from 0 through to 5. Now here we print the 6 element list and these program statements print each of the elements in turn. So the output from this program we would expect it to look like this. There's the list in its entirety and those are the contents of each of the elements in the list and if you look you can see there are six elements. So if you wanted a hundred element list you come here and you replace that six by 100. Now while I'm here I would like to emphasize that this here is not the efficient way of displaying the elements of a list to a console. There is a much better way than this. Just simply if I was to change this six to a hundred then I would require 100 of these here. Of course, each would have a different number in this position. It would go from 0 to 1 to 2 all the way up to 99 to cover the 100 elements of the list, which is obviously ridiculous. But of course, there are better ways to achieve this. Anyhow, now let's return to the way in which we can create a fixed element list. And we can see here we have two program statements. Both will create a four element list and this is the value that we want in every element position this is the repetition operator and we can see here we want four repetitions of this zero here you can see it's almost the same except we're emphasizing the object orientated nature because this is a constructor that is creating an instance of the list class and of course as a constructor we will need these brackets and within the brackets we can see we have this and if you look it is a repetition of this here consequently we have these two ways of creating a fixed element list having shown you how to create and initialize fixed length python lists my advice is not to use them in your python code i have shown how to do it because i am always asked how to do it mainly by programmers who are used to the fixed size of arrays in other languages. Python lists are not arrays. They are more flexible than arrays. The number of elements in a list can grow and shrink. A Python list can have its elements storing different types. So one element could be storing a float, another one could be storing another list, and so on. So we have more flexibility with Python lists than arrays. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.